Hello, and thank you for listening to WRYAT, New Orleans' fifth-ranked public radio station. As always, we're broadcasting live from a prefabricated Home Depot shed located off of South Carrollton by the Popeyes. And now for news that matters on Y'all Things Considered. Coming up next on WRYAT, a Y'all Things Considered special presentation. We will now listen in live to the Jefferson Parish City Council meeting. Can I get attention, please? Attention, please. Uh, Attention, attention. This meeting for the May 6th Jefferson Parish City Council meeting is in session. I, your parish president, Gil Galano, is representing. We will go ahead and begin the meeting. We would like to start with the roll call. Can I get the councilman to state their name and their committee that they are presiding over? Rafael Torres, District A, uh, District A Preservation Committee. Judith Spagano, uh, the garbage. I'm Jimmy and Piscetti, and I do hot dogs. I'm Wanda Levy. I do uh, the complaints. Thank you. And I now call this session into order. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to move into our first session of the evening. We're going to go into the study session where we have an expert panel this week. We have uh, partnered up with the New Orleans Council of Environmentalism, and we got an expert to come in. His his name is Skip Harris. Skip Harris comes from us from uh, Tulane University, where he is a professor of uh, insectology. Uh, he is he is a renowned scientist of of bees. He will talk to us about the bee problem. He might answer some of your questions that I know that we had last week. Namely, hopefully he can shed some light on these killer hornets that are a lot of people confused with bees, but were not in fact actually actually bees. They were detrimental to the bee population. I now present to you Skip Harris. Uh, Thank you very much. And I know that I only have a limited amount of time, but I do feel it's important to say that it's it's Professor Skip, uh, and I'm a professor of entomology uh, with a focus in bees, um, and uh, Tulane, Tulane was correct, um, so I, I thank you for that. Um, so uh, the hornets, uh, I want to come here today to tell you that hornets are not actually uh, a problem. Um, I know that a lot of people are concerned about uh, hornets due to the sting that they believe would occur if uh, those types of insects were present, but there are not a ton. In fact, bee populations within Louisiana. Uh, 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 hey, uh, hey, yes, uh, point Dexter. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, all right. This is, uh, uh, Raphael Torres, uh, District A, District A Preservation Committee. Uh, we have seen roving hordes of hornets devouring through our beautiful neighborhoods in District A. Uh, they are tearing up my re-election campaign posters, and those are the things that really brighten up a fresh green lawn uh, for a family, for an individual. Uh, wh- what are we going to do to deter these hornets from uh, giving us the bad PR here? I mean, I've got, I got a re-election to coming up here, sir. R- roving hordes of hornets? Roving, yeah. roving hordes of hornets. Wh- where is this? District A, best district. Uh, okay, um... It's I it's been redrawn a number of times, but it's still District A. Okay. District A all the way. I, I, I hear you. Um, I wonder if hornets are actually your problem. Um, have you considered that uh, if you have very garish posters that maybe you're putting on people's doors uh, and oh possibly no, no, I haven't considered it because I don't. Because everybody in the district loves me. They got their campaign signs out there. I'm one of the most popular councilmen representing District A. Uh, th- they get them of their own volition. I don't think that they're, uh, they're eye-catchy or anything like that. I mean, they look nice. They look modest. I think everyone here can agree. Uh, but, they, you know, they're simple. Straightforward, to the point, re-elect, re-elect Torres, District A, all the way. We got the date. Yeah, yeah I'm Don Pastas, Don Pastas. Uh, I, 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 I do the sidewalks in cement. I'm just saying that I'm finding a lot of bees, finding a lot of bees on the sidewalk, and they're not alive. And I'm wondering... Well, you know, people are like, how can I get him cleaned up? I'm just saying, personally, I like to use a broom. And uh, if you don't have a broom, you could probably come pick them up at Don's Did Ace Hardware. Sir, are you are you killing bees? No, if you find them on the ground, you got to pick them up. They're like pennies, but not lucky. They're bees, and they're dying. Okay. Uh, they just have on the sidewalk. You don't want to step on that, right? What happens if you, you, you're in a sandal or you're in your crock? 
and you slide out of it, and boom, bees. I don't know what he's talking about. His science is false because it goes against God. I don't know what he's talking about either, but I don't think, why are there so many dead bees in you, your district? Look, maybe it's the murder hornets. It's, it's, it's just a bee dies when it's its time to die, and that's just what happens. It has nothing to do with brooms or, or fertilizer or whatever else you said. But if you know, if you needed to go to a, like a bee, you know, like second line, you could, and you needed a ladder, you could probably come down to Don's Ace Hardware and buy a ladder. B second line. I, 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 this is far from what I had planned for today. What I wanted to say was, oh, that's not allowed. Flowers. Those aren't allowed to be planted on the sh on the sidewalks because anybody's just gonna have it on the sidewalk. You don't need to plant them. It's the dandelions. They're already there. God put them there. Oh. Uh, and, uh, that's why we need to, you know, not kill the dandelions. Uh, Raphael Torres, District A, District A Preservation Committee. Uh, I mean, no, we already have very strict homeowner association rules in a lot of the neighborhoods that we keep up there. Uh, more important than having the flowers is having my campaign signs in the front yards of people. We don't want them to be obscured by anything, you know, n new germination or an element introduced in this area that could uh, potentially be detrimental to the campaign signs. I mean, we're already dealing with the hornets, aren't we? I, I feel like this is no longer about the bees. We do need them, because if, if not, they're dead on the sidewalk, and you have to sweep them up. And that's not what we wanted to do. We want to have alive bees. We want them in the air. We want District B, District B, District B, District B. Are, are you District? District A. Why are so many bees dying in your district? Who knows? Maybe it's cell phones. What? Personally, I'm a Pelicans fan. I don't care that the Hornets aren't here anymore. <laughs> I... Uh... And that is enough for this session. Thank you so much there, Skip Harris, <laughs> Professor Skip Harris, for coming and uh, educating us a little bit more about bees and uh, eliminating some of the concerns that the council members might have had. Thank you for giving me much to talk to my therapist about. Thank you. Uh, may you drive safely back into uh, Orleans Parish. I personally don't drive there anymore. That is a personal issue that I, I just have. Thank you. Dooney Man. The urban legend is if you say his name five times while voting, he appears in the booth with you and proposes moderate social reforms. Who would do that? Noonie Man. Noonie Man. Noonie Man. Noonie Man. Noonie Man. Well, he isn't here, so I guess we're still voting for the incumbent. Oh, I want to get solar panels on every house in the city of New Orleans. Oh my, oh my god, it's him! Brittany, you broke the voting machine! This isn't funny! Hi there, my name's Richard. I'm a transplant to this neighborhood, Calliope. I uh, hear it was the projects. Yep, I just moved in around the corner. The old Noonie Man campaign headquarters? I'm a working class citizen without a union. You looking for Noonie Man? He's the would-be representative of this neighborhood. Why are you canvassing for this? I'm hoping to spread the word all about Noonie Man's platforms. The voting booth invites you to elect him. From the makers of When the Levees Blow. You should say his name. I dare you. Noonie man. Noonie man. Noonie man. Noonie man. Shh, shh, don't. Don't say that. Noonie man. This election day. I, I think I made a mistake. I campaigned for him and it looks like he's here to stay. But according to recent polls, Noonie man isn't real. Dare. Something is happening to the city? To say his name. He had a purpose for you to be another one of his constituents. I guess he found me. I think you gotta be from New Orleans. We gotta boost our police. This isn't real. This isn't real. This isn't real. Fake news. Noonie Man, the movie. He'll run. November 8th, 2022. I'm going to bring sanitation back beneath the city.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a little flop, a flip, flop. I got. Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm flop. Okay, I think it's flop. And you are calling into Bo Talk. This is the tenth episode of us doing the new format. Yeah, we've uh, we've been doing the new format with the, with the catchphrases. This is um either a uh, flip or, or flop here. You said you thought you were a flop. I think I'm flop. Okay, I think you're flop, flop too. Then that means I must be uh, flop. No, flip. Flip. You gotta be flip if you're flop. Flap? I, I don't yeah, I'm flopping. I'm flopping. We're, uh, speaking of flopping, this, I, I feel like this new boat talk has been, you know, it's been weighing on us. I can't say a lot of things too negatively, but we've been doing this for 10 episodes, and it's there's a whole lot of youth-focused brand names we have to remember and say in each episode, and we are getting ad reads out the wazoo here. I mean, this is a, this is a five-minute segment, and they want us to promote at least two to three uh, different services or products every episode. All the while remembering our new catchphrases and our new names. And which speaking of which, yeah. uh, Donnie, we uh, – I can't, God, I can't even say your name. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry, no, it's corporate okay. overlords. It's okay, Donnie. Uh, 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 flappy, uh, flip, uh, whatever. we got to read the damn uh, – uh, it's laminated. They put it on the desk because we keep forgetting it. Uh, g- g- we got to make sure we read the catchphrase. Who reads the first half? I don't All even right. know. I don't know. Well, here's the catchphrase. So we'll, so we'll say it because we're supposed to say it at the end. It's supposed to be our sign-off line, but we keep forgetting it, so they laminated it and put it here. Uh-huh. So the catchphrase is us uh, insulting each other, denigrating each other, you know, the way that, you know, it's worker being pit against worker here, loyal workers, y- y- decades of service for W-R-Y-A-T, and they want us to hate each other on the air for you for entertainment value. So uh, here's the catchphrase. Uh, Go fuck yourself, flop. Uh, uh, suck the devil's dick in hell. Uh, don't, don't, I don't, I don't kiss my brother on the lips. Season S. I, 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 God, I don't even know. It's about halitosis. Why, it's why can't we have the old catchphrase? I love okay? the old catchphrase. Where's the old catchphrase? It's smart. It's brilliant. and invites people to it's a simpler time. Brotherly. It's familial. We're all the water. See on the. We can't even say it anymore. Yeah. Can't even say it anymore. I had to take up <laughs> smoking yeah. because I'm so stressed out over this thing, and I haven't smoked. That's it's before the administration of that one guy. Yeah, that's true. That's right before the administration. Yeah. Hey, by the way, don't you get, get another one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? <sighs> okay, okay. Look, I'm s- uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really sorry. We, uh, you, you're not here to hear us talk about the good old days. You're here to hear us uh, g- connect with the, uh, I guess, new generation. I don't yeah, know. Whoever they are. I don't know. The, the millennials, the, the Zoomers. Uh, the, the boomers refer to all generations under them as millennials, so I guess it's them. Uh, let's go ahead and take and take a uh, boat talk call. Uh, call on the number one here. This is a, fl- a flip flop boat talk. And, uh, and yes, please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, I am. Uh, who's being flop? flop? Yeah, let's just go. Uh, uh, he's just, flip. I'm flip. Just ask the goddamn question. Hey, boat talk boys. Uh, what's the best oil to use in a 45 horsepower outboard motor? All right. Well. All right. Uh, okay. Um, I actually know the answer to that one. We could do this. Okay, we could do this. this. Finally. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, my God. Okay. All right. Nope. Station saying we got to do the ad reads. Oh, God damn. We're running out of time. We have to do the ad reads. So let's uh, let's do the ad reads fast. Right. We got, uh, we got, they just sent us both the ad reads. We got them right here. So we'll go ahead and do them. We got two today. So if we can get through them, we can answer this man's boat-related question. Finally one that we talk know. about boats. We, know we, can we can talk about boats and boat talk. Okay. All right. First all right, one. First all right, one. All right. First one right here. Okay. This is for... Bait box. Bait box. Uh, everybody, you're going to love bait box. Uh, once a month. Well, what do boaters love? What do fishermen love? Well, they love bait. You got to use it to catch all the goddamn fish. And instead of going, you know, to a, to a regular bait store, using your old tackle box and everything, and you're filling that up with uh, you know, and lear- learning from a guy with years of experience, a seasoned maritime veteran, uh, bait box instead is a very expensive service that you can subscribe to. It's on a monthly subscription model yeah. like everything else in this economy right now. Uh, you get a free trial for seven days. You get your credit card information in on the first day. You get your credit card information in on the first day. And you put in as much verifying information as you can. Your name, your address, social, uh, last seven years of taxes, whatever. And you'll get delivered to your door every month for the low price of thirty nine ninety nine a month. You get a box of bait. And this ain't bait that you would get from, again, like Terry down at the store who we love and is having to go out of business because of services like Bait Box. A man that has spent his whole life being a fisherman, teaching us what he knows, and sharing stories together. It's just a community. No, instead, you get Bait Box, and you open it up, and you're going to get tons of tons of different fun bait that appeals to your generation, uh, such as? Uh, such as bait that's shaped like the... Uh, oh, God, yeah. We got... The characters from that show Euphoria. Yeah, there's a lot of your lores in here that are shaped like your favorite characters from the show Euphoria. 
Uh, not going to understand why, 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 why they're referred to as bait. That's a little, th there's implications there, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, there's also a leather, uh, leather fishing rod handle. Uh, that'll, that'll fall apart in that'll your boat. Fall apart in your hands apart right away. Yeah, it'll come with a different fishing rod handle. Uh, and you'll also get uh, these organically sourced worms, ladies and gentlemen. These are. They come from the damn ocean. Yeah. They, they, the ground. they come from the ground. They come from the ground. These, they're these already organic. They're organically sourced. They come from the ground. And a lot of the times the worms will arrive in the box dead. So if the worms do arrive in the box dead, you just need to send an email to baitbox at bait.bizbox. Bit dot biz, and they will get back to you <laughs> within five to ten business days, and then we'll get the worms back to you within ten to fifteen business days if your claim is verified and that they are not found at fault for the dead worms in the box. But by that time, ten to fifteen business days, that's a month, you will have another bait box. Okay, so here's the next one. Here's the next one right there. Next ad read. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. God, Christ on his throne. So. Oh, God. All right. So the next product we got is Sea Copy. Have you ever been on a boat and then thought, I really need to print something? I have never, but have you? Uh, uh, presumably so. Yeah. So anyway, Sea Copy is a company that got together and to answer this unasked question and then delivered a fine service. And it's quite simple. All you have to do is order the Sea Copy printer, the newest model, the XJ72. Take the XJ72 and then you connect it to your outboard engine. If you have an inboard engine, they make a nifty adapter that also makes it easier. Once it's connected to there, what you've got to do is, oh God, you, you connect to the Wi-Fi using alternating power in order to receive any of your email files. And then you connect it to the, uh, the rec current in order for the printing services. But that's not all. There's a convenient app that you have to download in order to send and receive your files. And then once you receive your, your files, which have to be only in a PDF format, sent into the program, CCopy will take your pre-set up CCopy account, convert it over to a C... It, C it converts your PDF files to a CSC PDF file. A C PDF file that is proprietarily owned, and then, only then, can you print your files and then once your files come out, they will be printed on specialized, oh, God damn it, 80-pound, <laughs> 80, 80 hot-pressed C-copy paper. Double corrugated C-copy paper. And then it will be anti-aliased, and it would, would come out with all your copies that you will ever need while on the, on the, God, on the while out. you're on the water, while you're on the boat. So you will get, you will get all it. the, so, so yes. So, so if you've ever been on the boat and thought, maybe I should review my mortgage terms, or uh, what about that auto debit addendum I signed for my HELOC, uh, th this, this is the goddamn printer for you. So that's C copy, and that's th then. So you're gonna go to, to C copy uh, dot, dot, dot com. Dot yeah, com. Dot com. You're gonna you, you can go ahead and you can get a discount on your C copy printer today by entering the promo code, uh, uh, which is. Uh, um, we got that here. We got the promo code. We got a couple of different where's ones. Where's the C copy? Yeah. God damn it. I don't know where the code well, is. Or should just be boat talk. Why it should just be boat talk. That would make the most sense, but it's not boat talk. It thinks like flip one, flop two or something. Anyway, that, that's C copy. C copy. Yeah. You're going to pay the full price. C I'm copy. Sorry. Pay full price. C copy. Because like they say at C copy, see you on the water. Are you serious? That's the catchphrase. I'm I looking at the email. C copy took our own catchphrase. They took our own catchphrase, Ronnie. <laughs> How is this not? Said. That's not connecting with the generation. No, it doesn't make any sense. They said that they said that they focus said that it doesn't connect with the generation. Fuck you, see copy. God you damn it! Hashtag angry. Where's that boat gonna go through? What is that boat gonna go through? I can't God stand it. I can't. Right, stand I can't it. do this anymore. Oh, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look. Uh, I hope we answered your goddamn question. Uh, for boat talk, I've been um Ronnie D'Amico. I need an of cigarette. Who am I? Well, am I am I Ronnie? You, you Donnie. I don't even know anymore. All right. It's been Flappy. It's been Flappy Bird. Uh, don't fuck like my brother. He's virginal. Uh, thanks for fucking calling fucking boat talk. Uh, sucks. Fuck. <laughs>
portion where we make announcements to the community about people that have done something special and things that make our community great again. Council members? Uh, yeah, Jimmy Impaschetti here of uh, Impaschetti's Hot Dogs, uh, leader of the Hot Dog Commission here in Jefferson City Parish. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say my son made Little League All-Stars again, and I'm, I'm just so damn proud. So, uh, yeah, I just want that on record. Uh, Tommy Impaschetti is an All-Star. Thank you. I see my time. Uh, I'd like to uh, declare uh, the third week of March the official uh, uh, recycle your old light bulbs week um, th that really gums up the works over in uh, uh, in the trash groups. So uh, re recycle your light bulbs at the uh, uh, the light bulb recycling facility over on Claiborne. Uh, Don Pastas, Don Pastas. I'd like to say that uh, I heard that the prayer group down at St. Francis Squared is a uh, doing real good everybody on that pair group either has died because of covid or gotten better so keep the prayers coming it's it's got to they need the help Raphael torres uh D district a uh, district a preservation committee i uh, would like to give a shout out and major mondo props to one of the last non-snowflake sensitive teachers that we have teaching at grace king uh, this is, of course, Mrs. Vitelli. She is now uh, initiating a little linguistics program where she can try to differentiate, but t t teach the kids the differences between a Brooklyn accent and a Kenner accent. I find that to be very valuable and very important at separating us from the libs. Uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Vitelli. Uh, I, I would like to take this time on the council to uh, officially uh, give thanks to Jefferson Parish and its efforts with the Gretna Heritage Festival and the International Tarp and Radio and uh, Rodeo and uh, and Family Gras as well. Uh, what we really appreciate uh, Family Gras and how this has been a great staging area for Family Gras. And also uh, Dorniac's Grocery Store is is a wonderful grocery store to go to and really the only place where you can get some good good uh, uh, chicken fat in the city, as well as the uh, the Gumbo Festival. Uh, and also the, the Popeyes on veterans, I, I think, is really excellent. And uh, I'm, I'm always grateful that I can get to the airport uh, from airline. Uh, so I'm glad that that exists. And I, I really appreciate the Harry Lee Memorial that we were able to, to put up, uh, as well as uh, some of the abstract art sculptures that I presume are also in honor of Harry Lee. This is Wanda Levy. I forgot to say that I'm from District F. Um, and I want to, I just want to say, um, I'm up for re-election, and um, you you kids that were being hazed that one time, if you would go steal the other, my, um, if you will steal my opponent's signs again, that would be great, um, because I really just don't need any ungrateful people in office. Uh, I wanted to piggyback off the last guy. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, Rafael Torres, District A, District A Preservation Committee. Uh, I also wanted to say that the Popeyes on West Esplanade, really good. They usually will throw you in an extra chicken finger or two. You don't even have to ask for it. They just always hook you up. Uh, I just want to say that's in, you know it, Popeyes in District A, District A all the way, baby. Okay, thank you. That I uh, see my time. Dino Spamoni here from District Delta. I want to give a huge shout out to Councilman Raphael Torres, his wife, for giving the best blowjob in Jefferson Parish. Hey, get the fuck out of here, pal. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Council members. And I will take the, the last final announcement. I just wanted to announce everybody that uh, we successfully raised enough money for the reading program for the schools. We now pause this programming for station identification and remind you that you are tuned in to New Orleans' own WRYAT Pirate Radio. Learn more about our programming online at WRYATradio.com and follow us on Instagram at WRYAT Radio. As always, you can listen to this and previous radio broadcasts on YouTube, Spotify, or anywhere else you download or stream podcasts. Thank you for tuning in to WRYAT New Orleans Pirate Radio.
the Boomer Zoomer movie review is about to begin in three, two, one, action. Hello, and welcome to the Boomer Zoomer movie review, the show where two generations come together to talk about all things movies. I'm a 22-year-old film critic named Zoomer. And I'm a 70-year-old film critic named Boomer. And we, we love, love movies. movies. And I'm Karen. I love some movies. I just don't like the ones with too much skin in it or the ones with, that are full of lasers or dead dogs. Uh, to quickly summarize for our fellow film stands, Boomer's recent bouts with coronavirus, death, and undeath, long story, IYKYK, have left him unable to continue driving himself to the studio, so we will now have his wife, Karen, joining us from the corner of the recording booth. I promised Boomer that it w I wouldn't be a bother. You won't even know I'm here. Okay, I mean, thank you, Karen. Before we begin to vibe with the films featured in today's episode, let's check in with my co-host real quick. Boomer, last time I saw you, you were high-key trying to eat my woke brain because you were a zombie who had returned from the dead, or so you thought, and you had been dead because of the coronavirus, or so we thought. Spill the tea. How did you make it back here? Seriously, how? It's simple. I was just taking those horse pills like a, the real president told me to. Or as you hipsters would like to say, not my president hashtag. I was going through about, I don't know, six or seven pills per day when I started to get sick for some reason and had to go stay in the hospital for a few months. And then something that happened to all normal and healthy Americans from time to time. Oh. And while I was there... The so-called doctors lied to me and tried to tell me that I was taking too many horse pills. Some bull crap about how they have a serious side effect like fever, eye swelling, rash, dizziness, trouble breathing. So I told them to go screw because I obviously just had the flu. And Karen took me home when, when, when the government wouldn't uh, tell me what to do with my horse pills or my flu that I, I chose to get. Uh, because last I checked, it's still legal to get the flu where I come from, okay? And so I stayed in bed, rested up, taking my horse pills every time my flu symptoms flared up. I just thought he was dead because he was running a heavy fever and sleeping it off. So I left him home and I told everyone that he was dead. Just a goof on my part. Just a goof? I've been bedridden for weeks whenever that bill finally came due for the sins of the 1984 Brandon regime last fall. I really don't want to miss that. So I decided to take whatever horse pills I had left, get out of bed. I go to Walgreens to get my flu shot. And uh, maybe I wasn't quite ready to do that because on the way to Walgreens, I stopped here to try and, uh, you know, uh, eat, eat your woke brains instead. Wow. Yeah. And then and then I passed out, woke back up in the hospital, and those those stupid fake doctors told me to stop taking the horse pills again because I had done irreversible damage to my joints and brain. Clearly the government was on to me and were coming for my horse pills next. So I decided then and there that I would play their game for now. Oh, you were sick. But you were never a zombie boomer, or ever died, or ever even got coronavirus that time. You were just mainlining ivermectin for months on end. And because of that, <laughs> I am now completely fine. Then the city finally got rid of the mask ordinance, which means something all free thinkers knew already. COVID is done, okay? So I am back here and ready to talk about movies. You know what? Me too. This season of the show, we are proud to introduce our Boomer Zoomer Director Series, where we will take a look at three films from a celebrated director in each episode. And we're going to start with the director whose work is already living rent-free in the heads of film fans everywhere, the CEO of American Surrealism, David Lynch. Oh, jeez, this freaking guy. And we're going to start with his debut feature, the 1977 surrealist horror classic, Eraserhead. Is that the movie with the sperm baby? If it was me, I wouldn't have tossed that thing in the garbage. When I had my first child, I told my mother that if my baby had any deformities, I would leave it in a dumpster behind Arby's. Three of my girlfriends dropped off kids there and no questions asked. Okay, Karen, the, uh, the guys are talking here, baby. Well, it, Boomer, she's partially correct. 
in that the movie famously features an alien-like, inhuman baby born with physical deformities. But it is ultimately a story about a man's fear of becoming a father. At least that's the interpretation of myself and many others, as Lynch himself is infamous for his refusal to spill the tea on whatever his most highly expressionist at work is actually about, per se, choosing instead to let his art speak for itself and for an audience to draw their own conclusions as to what it could possibly mean, an approach to filmmaking that I believe, quite frankly, slaps. With this in mind, what do you think of Eraserhead, Boomer? Hated it. Next movie. That's it? That's it? That's all you have to say about the transcendental, medium-redefining premiere from one of cinema's most unique visionaries and last remaining legends? Listen, Zuma, you can try to sound as smart as you want about this pretentious piece of artsy-fartsy garbage. It's nothing more than a glorified student film for film students. Film students who want to all bitch and moan about how mean the dads are for being disappointed in them for wanting to make their movies instead of playing sports and settling down in their hometowns to take a nice, sensible, industrial oil and gas jobs and start families like decent, hardworking people are supposed to. Well, at least all those art students' dads still pay for them to go to film school no matter how gay they thought their kids were. And this is how they repay them, huh? Not everyone's dad lets their kids do what they actually want to do, okay? Sometimes, sometimes dads got to kill their kids' unrealistic dreams. Just like how the one in this movie finally nuts up and kills his unrealistic kid. It's because dads know best, always. And ain't no sick weirdo pervert movies ever gonna change that. Uh... Uh, Don't you dare, okay? okay? Next weirdo movie. This guy, Lynch, has made a lot of them, so hopefully the next one's not about how bad dads are. Well, the next movie is Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. Ah, Christ. I mean, if you want, it doesn't have to be just the movie. We could broaden it to include all of Twin Peaks. The original 1990 ABC series, the 1992 feature film prequel, the 2017 return series on Showtime. Uh, check the title of the show there again, big guy. It's not the Boomer Zuma TV show review, okay, Zuma? Okay? It's the Boomer Zuma movie review. I'm not going to talk about TV. In fact, we're not going to talk about TV at all. Okay. Fair enough, Boomer. Although... It would be chuggy of me not to point out that many consider the 2017 Return series that aired on Showtime to be an 18-part movie itself. That doesn't sound like any damn sense at all, okay? If it walks like a TV show and airs on TV like a TV show, then you know what it makes it? A TV show. That's the problem with your generation. Things can't be what they're supposed to be. They always want to be something else. It's like how if a man wanted to be... Okay, 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 take several seats, Boomer. I know where you're going with this, and if you don't want to catch these hands, I'm telling you right now, say less. What? Look, all I, I got to say is it's like how if a man wanted to be a film student but was just a student at a state college with no film program or nothing, and he went around by himself making himself a film school student, okay? What, what, do, you, what do you think I was going to say? D- uh... No, nothing, nothing. Back to the movies. That's more like it. Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me is the prequel to the iconic television series Twin Peaks. Released in 1992, the film depicts the last week in the life of Laura Palmer, the character whose murder serves as the catalyst for the events of the Twin Peaks television series. Upon its re- original release, the film received a negative response from critics and fans alike, largely because its darker and much less humorous tone hit different for audiences who were expecting something more quirky and offbeat, like the TV show. Its reputation has received a glow-up in recent years and is now considered one of Lynch's best films by many, but for me... This ain't it, Chief. I'm a huge fan of one and a half seasons of the original series, and The Return may well be the goat of David Lynch's filmography, but despite the truly bussin' performance of Cheryl Lee in the lead role, the aggressive unpleasantness of this film is all a bit extra for me, fam. Also, it's more than a little problematic for a cishet white male director like Lynch to ask young female actresses to do what they do on camera in this movie. Yes, I understand that many of them are playing prostitutes and victims of sexual abuse, but the belief that depiction does not equal endorsement is one I am proud to say that I do not subscribe to, especially as someone who has their own Twitter, Letterboxd, and YouTube accounts. You know what always bugged me about Twin Peaks? I never got why that red rum is supposed to be scary. 
almost every night I have a dream about a tiny man in a room. But it usually ends with a lot less dancing and backwards talking. And that and a lot more of that little man turning into my father telling me we can't go to the movies this afternoon because there's a football game on TV. And he turns into that broad from the Waffle House who serves me and Karen breakfast every Sunday after church. Boomer talks about her in his sleep, and those dreams get real spicy. If I had a nightmare about a minute... Hello, little person. Little person. Let me catch you right there and say little person, Karen. Little person hobbit. They all mean the same thing. They do not. They prefer to be called dwarves, sweetie. They do not. I just don't like them. When I was young, I didn't want to go near one because my grandma told me that they would affect our kids. So I just went home and washed my whole body outside. If... I even came close to one of those little fellas. You you can never be too safe. Since we're on the subject of my dreams about the Waffle House lady, are we going to talk about a good Lynch movie? Bruh, you are going to have to be way more specific. The lesbian one. I like that lesbian one. The chick from The Ring. Uh, Mulholland Drive? Yeah, that's it. Let's talk about that one. That one scene with the two broads going at it. Good scene. Ugh. Turn me around on Lynch. See, I always thought he was trying to get one over on me, huh? For years, I'd watch his movies and get angry with them real quick. I still remember being in a theater and wanting to shout, I get it! At the screen in the beginning of that movie with the, about the Blue Velvet. Yes, Boomer, uh, that movie is called Blue Velvet, and I low-key agree with you. The pan down from the green lawns of an idyllic 50s-esque suburban into the disgusting hill of bug-infested earth underneath isn't exactly subtle. No, uh, but that <laughs> shot was fantastic, okay? That shot's fantastic. I get it. I mean, I get it about how David Lynch obviously had a father who supported his son's dream of going to film school and becoming a famous director. Always felt like he was rubbing it in my face... But then he goes and does that lesbo scene in the Muhalla Drive. And let me tell you, now that's something he could rub my okay. face. I, our uh, last look at Lynch is the 1984 film Dune, based off of Frank Herbert's novel of the same name. Notorious for taking an historic L at the box office and for being disowned by Lynch himself, I, for one, can say with no cap that I did not like this adaptation. For me, it was campy, despite its age, and while I applaud Sting's attempt at portraying a sex-positive character, it still rings full of a male overpowerment fantasy and doesn't embrace any of the potential gender fluidity. Hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hey, this is a radio show, pal. Kids could be listening. Do not go off, Boomer. I'm dead ass serious. I know exactly what you're about to say, and I am so done with it, my dude. Besides, even if kids were listening, shouldn't they be educated on such things? Look, I agree. Dunes Lynch is bad. It lacked any sense of life in the characters. And for a race of sand people, they were all pasty white. But you need to watch what you say about sex, Lewis. It's improper. Oh. I thought you meant, uh, no. Never mind, never mind. And it can get real sticky, especially when it gets in the carpet. We had a cat that would just lick at that spot for hours. Karen. Uh, oh, 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 Karen, baby, uh, listen, uh, Zuma, we all know that Jokowski would have made a far superior do, okay? Hands down. And even though it wasn't ever made, that didn't stop Hollywood from stealing elements of his vision for Star Wars, Alien, and that fandangled uh, He-Man uh, that all the kids love. He-Man? He-Man? I appreciate that he uses pronoun in his name, but his aura is way too threatening to be H. Anyway, I don't really have much else to say about Lynch's Dune. Me neither. Garbage! I'm not even going to dignify that movie with a response. And we don't have enough time to talk about just how nice it must have been for that freaky-looking Timothy Chalmonade brat to have a dad who clearly encouraged his entitled dreams of going to film school to become an actor. Should have put the erase ahead on that bug-eyed kid when they had a chance. I can tell you that much. Well, I liked it. It had that cute uh, Cafe Olay skinned girl in it. Uh, and that's our time, folks. Thank you for joining us on the Boomer Zoomer Movie Review. Yeah, come on, Karen. We gotta beat traffic before the Golden Corral and Williams closes. This has been the Boomer Zoomer Movie Review. Coming up next on WRYAT, 
a Y'all Things Considered special presentation. We will now listen in live to the Jefferson Parish City Council meeting. Let's take a look and open the panel and the microphones to some audience members who are here on this here Tuesday, Friday, Friday at 1030 in the morning here at the Council Hall, uh, who took time out of their very busy day to become good members of this community where they are taking an active look at their civil duties and responsibilities and then giving back. I am so happy and so proud. So now I'm going to open it up for some of the members of the community to step forth and then give your petitions and then ask your questions of the council members. Hi, I'm Stacy Nola Girl and um, I have a, a question. I have to be here for school, by the way. That's why I'm here right now. But hey, I didn't want to be in class. Um, but I I'm wondering why y'all just don't like download group me and have this meeting over that because this has been a complete <laughs> waste of time. Uh, what's group me? I don't know this group me. Uh, uh, gr uh, group me, uh, no, uh, no, young lady. There's a, uh, uh, this is uh, Raphael Torres, uh, District A, District A Preservation Committee. Uh, w we have, you know, this is a group meet. Uh, we meet as a group, we're council members. That's, I, I don't know what you, you think. It's a waste of time. I mean, hey, some days I agree with you. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, you know, um, you got some attitude. I yes, sir. I'm um, I'm a small businessman, and I'm trying to set up an arcade within uh, the city of Metairie, um, but I can't seem to get a zoning permit for such a commercial business. Um, what what would you recommend for, for me to do to be able to move that along? Um, well, you could um, file a complaint with the complaint, but I'm going on vacation next week, so uh, good luck. What, I have to start with a complaint? Isn't there some some process where I could yeah, appeal to the zoning committee or or something like that. I, why would I start with a complaint? Um, it's a complaint that you're uh, it's taking too long. Okay, that's, that's what I'll do, I guess. Thank you for your time. Next question. Hi, uh, this is this is Stan from Lakeview. Okay. Um uh, go Saints first of all and foremost. Yeah, can I get can I can I get it? I know it's football season. Anyway, uh, but oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, who that sister? Anyway, but so uh, on those time uh, subject, um, um, I wanted to uh, talk to the committee. Um, I noticed uh, there's um, like we got all these names. Oh, oh, everybody wants to change names of streets in uh, in Jefferson Parish. Uh, they don't they don't believe that uh, that these uh, civil patriots. Uh, deserve to have streets named after them. So I was thinking, uh, I was talking to my my wife about it, uh, why don't we just uh, rename those streets to just like uh, New Orleans Saints, uh, like New Orleans Saints Boulevard and uh, Lakeview, or um, um, like change some of the statues, just the, uh, you know, New Orleans Saints Circle, and uh, I know it's Orleans Parish, but like, like you know, you hear what I'm saying, right? Like, uh, yeah, like Deuce, Deuce Saint, McAllister. Uh, uh, Don, Imp uh, Don. Yeah, 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 Don. Yeah, you know, the Siemens, uh, concrete. What I'm saying is that uh, y you're in the wrong parish. That's a great point. But wrong parish. I, I think I, I think we can really have some uh, saints uh, saints saints names here in Jefferson Parish. So why is it gotta just be Orleans? No, why is it gotta be just Orleans? Okay, like we're we're a parish too. Like I'm a, I'm a football player fan. Like you're a football player fan. I, I would assume uh, everybody here. Like go go Saints, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so tell me, <laughs> council member, why can't we have it? Why can't it only be Orleans Parish that has Saints streets names? Why, why can't we have those? Uh, I'm, I'm a little confused because when you say we, do you mean by you living in Lakeview? Yeah, it's still like... Or do you mean like Jefferson Parish? Jefferson Parish, look, okay, look. Okay, so Jefferson Parish, we can, absolutely. But the thing is that uh, you don't live in Jefferson Parish. Look, look, I'm still part of Jefferson Parish, all right? Look, I, I know it might the, the district lines are there, but it's still Jefferson Parish, okay? Why can't we just name it after, like... The Saints, that's all I want to do. I want to bring the community together. Why do you have to okay. draw a line? I'm, I'm drawing a line right underneath. Please rename the streets to Saints. I, 
I think uh, I think we can all come together here on this point if we all just agree that we should have a street called uh, Falcon Suck Boulevard. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's all I wanted. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I yield my time. Thank you. Okay. Name's Clarence. This one goes out to Don Pastas. Don, I hired you to do some uh, contract work, my sister-in-law's driveway. Now, you stuck her with a pretty significant invoice, and there is still a pretty significant pothole What where her car should be parked. I just want to know if we want to uh, maybe, uh, I don't know if this is the appropriate forum, but you ain't returning my calls. So I wanted to see if we could maybe uh, settle up. Man to Don. Uh, Don Possles, uh what this man is saying is completely true, uh, but there is elements that are not being brought to light, like the fact that Rhonda's car was in the garage and was then towed by a tow truck, a repoed, towed by a tow truck through the wet cement. And uh, that's why the car is stuck in the cement. Yeah, but you still said you was going to fix it, though. That's the thing. It's nice. Before there was wet cement, and then she got towed away, what, for all them unpaid tickets and all. N- then you still n- left another chunk of, chunk, of, ch- chunk, of, chunk of street there missing. I just want my wife to be able to park her car when she gets it out of the impound. My sister-in-law. Sorry. <laughs> that could go either way. I just want my damn sister-in-law to be able to park her car when she gets out of the impound. Don. Okay. What are you going to do about it? I'll make it right for you. Good. Do you want me to do a public apology? Hey, just start there, yeah. Hi, my name's Don Pastas, and I am apologizing for my... Business. Louder? Hi, no. my name is Don Pastas, and I am apologizing. Really get into the microphone, Don. My name is Don Pastas, and I'm apologizing for... Hang my on, I can get my phone out. Okay, now, now, like, you really mean it? Okay, this is the first time I'm saying it, so I mean it. Uh, my name is Don Pastas, and I own... A cement company called Don Cement Company, and uh, I did a bad job for this man's sister-in-law, Rhonda, uh, and uh, te- technical things that come into play. Long story short, the job that I was hired to do, I did not do, and I will uh, fix it for free. All right, now that's all that we got him. That's on World Star. So we're gonna make sure that that's that's evidence. That is videographic evidence and a living record. Thank you, Don. You cannot welch on this, though, all right? I see you. I still got your number. Return my calls. Thank you so much, Council Member. That is the ending of our meeting. Uh, Councilwoman, would you mind giving us a benediction to send us all off? I don't know what that is. I'm so Methodist. I, I apologize again. I, I've forgotten once again that uh, the Methodists do not uh, practice. Uh, that uh, does the... Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said before, I just kind of live by myself. Uh, do you? Does the Methodist have any kind of prayers to say goodbye? Uh, I don't understand. Like, uh, what's the difference between the Methodist and the Catholicism? I, I, I just I'm not a very learned man, and it comes to those things. Methodist is a practice, not a religion. Oh, uh, but it's, it's the same God, though. Do you, do you have a prayer for God? I was raised that way. I don't really pray. I don't know how I got elected. Like, do you not have like a, a like something you say to your family like before your children go to sleep? Uh, assume I, I I sorry I I don't know if you have kids or not. I just say sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Oh, yeah. Why don't Why don't that's you? Good. That's I'll good. Why do, good. do you mind yeah. just say it one more time? We'll we'll put an amen at the end of that. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Jefferson Parish Council meeting adjourned. Thank you. This has been WRYAT New Orleans Radio. We thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.